So you just bought your first electric vehicle, congratulations. Now how do you charge it? In the world of electric vehicles, you can find yourself uh, ha enjoying the convenience and comfort of the smooth ride, the convenience of having a full tank every morning, if you know how to charge your vehicle. So I'm gonna treat this as like it is a beginner's guide on how to charge the electric vehicle that you just purchased to make your life easier and to make the transition uh, easier on you. This is not an internal combustion engine car. You can't just drive wherever you want to and assume that there's gonna be a filling station anywhere you go. Not entirely true. Uh, you gotta plan ahead and you gotta kinda of think about time in here as well. But charging at home, easiest way to go, so let's start there. This is our 2022 Chevrolet Bolt EV 1LT. It came with this. This is a level one EVSE. Some people will call it a level one charger. You'll know it's a level one charger because of the three prong Edison plug or 120 plug that it has on this end. This end of the charger is called a J1772. Looks like this. If you're charging at home off of an exterior outlet to your house or an outlet in your garage, any normal three prong outlet will do, plug in this end first. Plug it into the wall. On this box here, there are lights. One of those lights will flash uh, green for most EVSEs when it is ready to go, when it's ready to charge. Until the EVSE gives you that light, don't plug the car in. Once it gives you that light, you're good to go. You just take the J1772 end, go to your charge port door, plug it in, and wait. That is level one charging. Some cars come with these level one EVSEs, others do not. Some manufacturers are taking to charging as much as an extra $500 to add them into your car. You don't have to pay $500 for one. If it doesn't come with one, you can find them cheaper elsewhere that will still do the same job. This is what's called a dumb charger. It will just bring, pr provide electricity to the car. It's not the charger, it's the, elect it's the supply. The charger is on board in your vehicle and that's what's gonna regulate the power flow and ch set your charge limit. Level one charging is very slow. We're talking anywhere from 12 to 16 hours or more, uh, depending on your car's onboard charger. The next step up is level two charging. It's a little bit faster. There you're talking, if, if just a little bit of power, anywhere from two to four hours or a full eight to nine hour overnight charge, going through a 240 outlet at your house, like a plug for your dryer that you might have in your garage. Most uh, level two EVSEs have what's called a NEMA 1450 plug that you can plug straight into that outlet. Or you can do what we did and have an electrician come out and hardwire it directly into a breaker box so that you have that one dedicated circuit. Very important to have that dedicated circuit running 240 to your vehicle when you charge. The, the other end is usually a J1772 or it could be a Tesla plug if you, if you have a Tesla um, or the NACS, I should say, and some newer EVs are going to start coming out with those. Aside from that, it's going to work just like the level one, except it will charge a little bit faster because it's a 240 volt outlet. Depending on the amps of your circuit and the charger on your car, that will determine how fast the car can charge. But again, level two charging is not what you wanna do for a road trip. The next step up, if you're charging on the road, on a road trip, is gonna be DC fast charging. Sometimes people call it level three charging. This is not something you're gonna have at your house unless you're extremely wealthy. They are not cheap. Uh, they're going to be public installations at public places uh, run by public charging networks like the Tesla Supercharger Network or Electrify America or EVgo or ChargePoint. The list can go on and on and on. Unless your car is a Tesla right now in 2023, then chances are high that it has a CCS combo charge plug. In that case, when you open your charge port door, you're going to have to uncover the DC pins underneath it to be able to plug the CCS in. When you're at the public station, some of them want you to log in to the app first, some of them want you to plug in first. It'll say on the screen what to do. If it says plug in first, grab the plug, plug it into the car, and then go into the app to start your charge. 
you should, if you're planning a road trip, find what your charge, where your chargers are going to be and have the apps for those charging networks already downloaded onto your phone with your payment information already entered in so that you can do this on the app. These charge stations do have credit card readers sometimes, but most of the time those credit card readers don't work. So don't necessarily rely on that. That's where a lot of charging headaches are gonna come from. If you're able to start the charge on the app or the, you're set up with a network that can start automatically like some vehicles are able to do with Electrify America, like my Chevy Bolt is able to do at EVgo, like Teslas are able to do at Tesla Superchargers, then you're fine. Tesla Superchargers have come out with a magic dock that allows you to charge a CCS combo car at that Tesla station, but uh, you have to log in through the app to be able to do that. While you are DC fast charging, it is a best idea to not charge above a certain level. With most EVs, that's somewhere around 80%. These cars throttle down their charging speed after that to protect the battery. It can hurt the battery if it takes power too fast, too high in its state of charge. That's called a charge curve. The peak of the charge curve, that's where you want to be charging. You can find out where your car's peak charge curve is and then plan your route around that. So for instance, say your car charges best between 10 and 50%. You want to arrive at the charger at 10 and have, and when you get to 50%, have enough to get to the next charger. That will make your charge time less while you're on the road. Some EVs are capable of charging faster at these DC charging stations than others, and my car is one of the slowest. Finally comes the programming. Your car, your electric vehicle, is going to have an onboard computer that will allow you to set your charge limit to a certain percent. Most manufacturers are not going to recommend that you charge to 100% all the time. Some will. If yours recommends not going to 100%, or if you just don't feel like it, you can set your charge limit to be 80% on a daily basis. When you plug the car in, it'll stop accepting power once it's at an 80% state of charge, once you've programmed it in in your car's uh, display. If you want it to go to 100, set it to 100. You can also set times on your car so that your, char your car charges in your electricity company's off-peak hours so that you're paying less for that electricity. Some level two chargers are smart chargers and they also have that ability but make sure that you're only using one of those programs at the, at one, at the same time because if you have your car programmed from a different time and your level two EVSE programmed for a separate time then your car might not get charged because the two systems are arguing with each other over what they should do just rely on one of them to do that uh, when you're charging on the road you should never go beyond 80%, it'll take you too long. You'll also take up the stall for other people and create those lines. Uh, charging to 100%, if there's nobody else there, go ahead. If you don't have anywhere to be, go ahead. It will take you less time to unplug sooner, flies. It will take you less time to unplug sooner uh, and go to another charger rather than go until you have an empty tank and fill up all the way like you do with a gas car. It's a change in mindset that you have to have to really have a stress-free life of owning uh, and driving and operating an EV. I hope you have found this video informative. If you have, give it a like. If you want more content like this, please subscribe. If you have any other questions or comments, leave them in the comments. That's where they go. And you can find links for all of our socials down in the description. Thanks for watching.